at uh, the Hitachi Information Forum in Santa Clara, the heart of Silicon Valley. Big announcement today, guys. Wow, very, very un Hitachi like with all this great marketing, right? Really tremendous messaging. We've seen it in the past a little bit from Hitachi, but really seeing it uh, today. Big, big um, stage, Jack Domey looking good, all pumped up. A couple of customers, you guys here. Now, now, Devang, you were in Japan, right? Recently? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it was an interesting trip, and uh, all the flashiness that we saw today here. I mean, it's just amazing. Did you go, Rick? To Japan? Yeah, yeah, we had. A you small guys are both there. Yeah, tell, yeah. tell us about that. What was that like? Yeah, there were six of us, right? Yeah, there's six yeah, of us. Six that of us, had, yeah. Had gone, and three of those are here today. Uh, basically, it's a preview program. Um, is you know NDA and all that type of thing, basically. So we can kind of get a feel for um, the message, the product, and the supporting. The elements of the product. Guys got the inside scoop. Yeah, yeah. bloggers getting the inside scoop. We're breaking new ground, guys. The class. No, no, I mean, it, yeah. it was uh, it was amazing. They gave us access to all the engineering guys there, mm -hmm. and uh, would you go to Odawara? Or? Yeah, we went to Odawara, and yeah. uh, could you see yeah. Mount Fuji? Or was it uh, no, no, yeah. no. It was uh, it was a quick trip. Uh, I've been there a lot. I've never seen Mount Fuji. It's always been under clouds. So. Yeah, yeah. So four <laughs> days, uh, but uh, but pretty good uh, information, and 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 every night we had dinners with the Hitachi execs. So. Uh, pretty pretty open culture from that perspective. Now, did you attend the Hitachi uh, user conference? Uh, yeah, there's as well? a, there was this conference by the name of U Value celebrating U -value, Hitachi's yeah. uh, hundred years uh, anniversary, and it was it was great to be there. And you know they started making turbines back hundred years ago, and uh, you know all the innovation that has happened in the industry that Hitachi sort of leads today. Yes, yeah, so, so you guys really got a flavor for the culture, right? The conglomerate nature of, of the bigger Hitachi. Oh yeah, and there's you know the storage, the server elements, and the software elements, and it was it was a good, you know, program in turn in terms of uh, access, you know, for a blogger. That's uh, it's that's unique, you know, for a blogger to have that type of access. And I know that the guys we really enjoyed it, and um, you know, to see a product um, pre-release at that level, that was in, in my experience, I've not been really access to that level of detail that level of um, exposure to the engineers to the product to the messaging everything up and down it was uh, it's it's been a pretty good journey as far as uh, providing us that information and you guys were able to give them a lot of feedback as well i presume i'm sure they were looking for that feedback uh, uh, some more than others yeah yeah <laughs> so i think everybody brought in um, brought in their own backgrounds and um, because we all came from different backgrounds it was it was good to see uh, the mix of information that they were looking for overall right. uh, from the blogger community. All right, let's get into VSP. You guys are experts in this business, and, and I don't use that term lightly. I, I, I see both of you out there blogging extensively. You see each other on, on Twitter. You really have a deep knowledge. What's your take, uh, Devang, on, on this announcement? What are the highlights for you? So I think it's it's market changing. Uh, first of all, you know, as we talk about SaaS, we talk about power consumption. Um, you know, the SaaS two technology that they are incorporating into the VSP um, sublunt hearing. That's going to be a big announcement again. That that's something that being it's being uh, released as of uh, as of version one. Um, and uh, and overall with virtualized storage. The, or with virtualization these days uh, and virtualized data centers, customers are looking to bring more efficiency into their data centers. And this is sort of that leap into storage uh, and interfacing VMware from that extent or any virtualization uh, and delivering the, the, the message of efficiency and, and doing uh, more with less really. How about you, Rick? What are the high points of uh, VSP from your perspective? Well, definitely to see a, I don't want to call it a purpose-built virtualized storage engine, but that's kind well, of... That's kind of what it is. Yeah, exactly. If you, you, know, had, it's if you had to describe it you know, that way, yeah, sure. It's not off the shelf. Right, right. right. This is not the suit you buy at JC Exactly. Penn. This is, so this it, is custom tailored. It's, it's exciting in that sense because it's going to reflect the, the infrastructure requirements of the day, okay? And I'm a VMware guy, so, you know, anything that is uh, virtualization optimized from the start is good. Um, I know that the VAAI integration will be rolling in um, as an incremental release, so that's good to know. But you know, it's definitely not a hindsight element to the product because it, it, you know, as I'm talking to the HDS uh, folks, it's it's clear that that's not just a dot rev of the firmware. There's a lot of work that goes into VAAI integration, and then and that's only where we are right now with these three you know functions, and then what's going to come more with it. So it's good to see that um, virtualizing up and down the data center. I, and you know, outside of the VMware world, you know, you'll see 
uh, software uh, integrations from, uh, from like in the Hyper-V area start rolling in. So that's going to be attractive to the, you know, to the typical data center. And, you know, forget the cloud message. There's still people that have to uh, keep the drive spinning and keep the servers up, you know, like me. And, and that's going to, you know, apply, you know, be applicable in that sense. Well, the, the VMware messaging I thought was very good. And it was somewhat unexpected from my standpoint. I, I had been hearing more Hyper-V from Hitachi, and, and I think they flipped that and really recognizing that, that VMware is, where, is sort of the IT economy right now. And, and I was impressed with the VAI integration and the timeliness of it. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think you have to reflect the market. In my personal opinion, Rega regarding the market is that the VMware's market is really only going to go down. I, I hate to say that for the typical server virtualization environment, Hyper-V is only going to come up. So I think that you have to start, you know, and with a purpose-built infrastructure right now to be aware of the market, and, and those two forces are just undeniable. And, and to an extent, you can roll in Citrix and Oracle VM and, and anybody else you might want to, but definitely you have to have those two players from the start, ready to go. You know, there's the message and then there's what's available. And you know, from the VMware side, I have a good, you know, handle about what's available and what's coming in an incremental release. But as far as Hyper-V, not quite um, as informed as I'd like to be, but that's that's not really where I... Scale of one to 10, Hitachi and, and VMware, uh, um, in terms of competitiveness of, of, of offering, you know, one being do over and, and 10 being, you know, world dominance. Where would you put them? I would put them. I would put them at a at a nine simply because their other product was uh, VAAI ready on day one with their AMS series. Okay? Right. It's a lot easier to roll modular storage into that type of feature set, but uh, there was a very small list of people that were ready on day one. Yeah. So obviously EMC with Clarion was ready. Uh, yeah. I think three par was ready. Yeah, three par was ready. And AMS uh, with and the top. And then recently, AMS. I think HP just made an announcement. Uh, no, I don't HP, think yeah. they are there yet. I, I can't confirm, but I think Equalogic had a had a product ready. Equal Dell Equalogic yeah, and, I, I and then NetApp's a little further up. That was an announcement. Yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. And and then you're seeing so you're all these other them a tiers. Very high marks there. Well, just because day one, that's important. I mean, you know, it's it's available to the vSphere administrator. You know, if uh, and, it, and if I remember correctly, I can't remember the revisions correctly, but um, it was available to the existing product on the floor. So it was an update available wh rather than rip out the controller. That's a whole nother burden, you know, because some situations it's a new product that has it. Let's talk about um, scale up, scale deep, and scale out. This is new messaging that I had not heard before. Um, you guys maybe heard it in Japan. Wh what does all that mean, Devang? So, so I think there have been several blog posts in the past by Michael Hay, even by Hugh, about 3D Cartesian scaling. And as you start reading into that, you know, this message that they have for VSP sort of falls in line. Uh, being able to manage your storage and being able to scale it in the right manner is, is the key. Uh, so the Command Suite 7 uh, has a message around management while uh, the VSP has a, man uh, has a message around the, uh, the scale out, the scale deep, and the scale um, um, the third I'm forgetting. Up, but out, deep. Out, yeah, and, and up, right. Uh, but, the, but, the, but the idea is to have uh, your storage that could scale out uh, as um, the VSP allows a customer to have 255 petabytes of storage behind a partic particular VSP system, uh, being able to leverage your infrastructure in the right way, scale up, and then being able to scale deep again is using different manufacturers behind them uh, and, uh, and help virtualize and, and optimize your environment. Yeah, so when I think of scale out, I think think, you know, Sonas or Isilon or, you know, Chicklets kind of yeah. <laughs> scaling out. There's, there's a different, little bit different philosophy here, isn't it? Um, so let's, let's grade them. So scale up, uh, scale out, actually take them in this order. Scale deep, scale out, scale up. So on a scale of one to 10, no pun intended, um, you know, one being just a bunch of marketing hype, 10 being, you know, it's here, it's ready, it's, it's industry leading. Where would you put uh, scale deep? Uh, scale deep, I would put at nine or 10 actually, because of the maturity of the technology. Uh, they have been talking about this, well, it, the scale deep wasn't there, but the, the technology was there with the v, uh, with the USPV. Right. So the, uh, the VSP sort of enhances that whole experience for the customer, the whole storage virtualization experience. Have any commodity storage behind a VSP, and we'll help you scale deep really into whatever you have behind. Okay, it. well how about the how about the scale up? It's sort of been Hitachi's ethos, right? The scale up was also high marks there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would say probably eight, nine. Um, 
on that messaging as well. And then well. how about the scale out? You know? uh, absolutely. You, know, well, you, you put them up high as well, uh, even absolutely. without some of the clustering technologies? Well, I think the clustering and other things are probably in the works, I would say. Uh, again, when you look at the VPlex or you know the other EMC technologies out there, they are sort of more enhanced from that perspective. But I think Hitachi is sort of like catching up uh, to that whole, um, you know, having more of a clustered environment. So uh, scale out, scale up, scale deep, you see them as all pretty mature and, and ready to be purchased, right? I mean, it's real, it's real, it's not it's marketing. Right, right, right. So it's not just marketing buzz created around it. It feels like there is substance to each of these uh, things that they have mentioned as part of the marketing message. Rick, anything that's missing from uh, from this announcement or, you know, this day? Oh, well, my uh, my only nitpick is that uh, you know this day is focused on on the larger solutions with VSP and the, the new Control Suite Seven, but I'm always a big fan for the the mid and smaller environments. Okay, so um, we did have a incremental update on the modular storage I think in June you know, from the HDS product line, but um, you know I'm always looking for the little guy. Okay, and so this stuff isn't doesn't really apply for the little guy, but um, I'd always want to see. Uh, uh, a little bit more from uh, in the terms of features uh, from the from the small end storage, and, and they've generally done a pretty good job with that, especially with the new Control Suite Seven. But uh, and, and the software offerings with the modular storage is is pretty much on par with what you know, pretty good for the small storage requirement. So I can't really think of anything that's really missing, other than just don't forget about the little guy. Yeah, I mean that's I think actually a big challenge for for Hitachi it is. HDS because. Historically, my sense is that Hitachi's been, they've certainly done very well with the AMS, but for instance, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the USB VM, the USB VM diskless. You know, there was a, a product that I think had a lot of potential in the marketplace, and it was very, to me, SVC, IBM SVC-like. Yeah. I almost think that, that Hitachi gave that market a little bit to uh, uh, IBM because it was afraid that it would eat away at its high-end margin. So I think this is a real challenge for Hitachi, and I think they're up for the challenge. The whole content cloud, coming together, it sort of changes the perspective where they're just not in this big high-end OLTP niche. Do you guys agree with that? What do you think about that? Talk about that a little bit, Devan. No, I think it makes sense from that perspective when we, um, the, the VSP again, uh, based on its existing technology, will you can buy it without drives or diskless version as well as you can buy it with uh, 2,048 drives. So it helps you scale from that perspective. Uh, so you can have a bare, bare basic version or scale out from that perspective. Um, also, um, the messaging around cloud uh, and some of the secure multi-tenancy. I, I don't think they use the word secure multi-tenancy, but it's more safe multi-tenancy. Um, you think uh, they're purposely avoiding that, that I, word? I think or? so, yeah, <laughs> I think so, yeah. It's, it's very hard to find that word secure anywhere, but uh, it, it, because of there are virtual partitions that are in the system, it does enable the system to be much more like cloud ready. Right. Okay, we're here with Rick Vanover and, and Devang Panchagar. Hey, uh, guys, how do people uh, find you, Devang, your, your blog? Why don't you tell yeah, us so I blog at storagenerve.com, um, and uh, my Twitter handle is at uh, storagenerve. Right. And, 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 and Rick, how do we find you? Uh, my blog is rickatron.us, R-I-C-K-A-T-R-O-N.us. And um, you can also find me on Twitter at Rick Vanover. Yeah, believe it or not, th they can't hear. They can hear it a little bit, but okay. these mics, that's why we asked you to get so close. You know, our, our engineering team, Michael Sean Wright and Mark Hopkins, have engineered the Cube to be, uh, to be you know, uh, ambulance proof, right? We were at... Uh, we were at VMworld, you remember the ambulances yeah. going by? We were broadcasting the whole time and our guests came through loud and clear, so great job, guys. I apologize for overspeaking. No, no, it actually it sounded great. No, okay. no, so uh, Rick and, and Devang, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and, and sharing your insights um, about the, the trip you guys took to Hitachi. Sounds fantastic. You know, I was on vacation or I would have joined you, yeah. but, uh, but, but uh, I'm, I'm envious and jealous and uh, really appreciate your insights. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank great you. to have you. Cheers.